um, have been working on kind of workflow stuff and uh, thought I'd share with you all um, sort of how I go about uh, just designing and developing websites in general, but in particular TreeSaver. Um, so, you know, this is my workflow. Um, and let me just go over some of the tools. This is Espresso that I use for text editing, uh, just the regular terminal, and uh, the web browser. And to get this layout, uh, I use this program called Optimal Layout. Uh, and it kind of allows you to um, resize windows and just like draw them on a grid. So, you know, these, these windows lock up nicely and I'm just using uh, the, the layout of my, uh, my monitor uh, most efficiently. So here I can see sort of uh, design and then here it's um, um, the browser and um, I'm using live reload and often I use um, uh, Adobe Shadow to preview websites quick, quickly on all of my devices so uh, live reload will keep track of, of uh, sort of updates so as I change the style sheets, uh, it automatically updates in the browser, so I don't even have to touch it. Um, and for styling, you know, everything is just done in SAS, so it quickly compiles everything. And I actually have this particular thing set up, so I'm working on three different templates right now. Uh, and this is inside the TreeSaver framework, so I built a styling framework around this. Uh, and it basically just paginates um, paginates websites. Um, so here's like a book template. The, the previous one was a uh, magazine template, and this is kind of like a, a news uh, kind of reader. And the, it will adapt to different sizes, just kind of on the fly, uh, which is nice. Um, so let me just snap that back into place. And uh, cool. So uh, let me start compiling my uh, SAS. And what I do is so right now I'm just watching this entire fold, this SAS directory, and it's compiling to this HTML. And there are all three of these templates in here and because I've separated um, separated the core of the framework from this the uh, the themes um, it can just compile everything at once so here are the themes and then here's the core library in here um, and inside of that sort of the the chrome is the same on all of these so this is the core that handles sort of the loops and logics of, uh, of my grids. Um, and then inside of each themes, there's a configuration file, uh, and that has, uh, you know, the basic colors and basic sizing, um, as well as fonts and uh, image ratios, stuff like that. And then inside pages, it's kind of all of the individual styles. Um, so if I make a change here, um, you know, let's just go into the configuration file and, um, you know, I'm just going to change, uh, make the page so it's white on black instead of black on white. So the text would be, um, it's kind of like a really light gray and the page, uh, a dark gray with the body is black. So let's see how that works. And sort of on the fly, you can see that SAS detected the change, and the page is, uh, you know, everything's styled towards towards that. Um, and uh, it's actually watching three different, uh, all of my different themes. So let's say I make a change to um, to the the Chrome, which is sort of the the interface around it. So 
Um, let me just go into that Chrome file. So this affects everything around, um, you know, the entire sort of interface of it. Uh, let me just change uh, the button color, make them all bright red, and I have debug classes. So simply putting the mix in R onto um, onto these will make everything red. So as you can see, I made a change to the that universally applies to all of these templates. So it compiled for glossy hardback and newsprint, which are the different themes. And as I go in, I can see that, uh, let me just refresh. The change has just been applied everywhere. Um, so this keeps, the, one of the hardest things about developing um, so many websites and so such a, on such a big scale is maintenance and keeping the framework separate from the skin uh, really helps with maintenance so I can just simply recompile and uh, everything is up to date and working smoothly um, so you know I can just change that back It detects the change, and uh, you know it's it's styled how I want it. And you know this change has cascaded down through these three different templates. So let's say let me just change the config back. All right, back to normal. Um, but let's say I'm tweaking something and I want to kind of see all of the variations in between what's going on and because live reload um, implements the CSS changes sort of incrementally I can sort of um, use CSS transitions to f flow between them all um, so if I go to glossy and uh, So I have these, I've basically separated um, tools and plugins, and tools are loaded initially, those those are the things that help uh, basically like mixins and functions that help throughout the creation of publications and styling. And then there's plugins which um, transform the page uh, afterwards. So um, plugins do things like create mobile specific styles, um, they create sort of generalized um, you know no JavaScript stuff um, normalization of, of uh, sizing uh, basically styles that get written afterwards uh, are plugins whereas tools are things like gradient mixins um, type tools and, and various various elements that you might need while developing something so I made a a, a plugin called live reload it simply animates everything so as I change um, so let me go back and change uh, change some of the sizing on this this template here so maybe I want the module width to be a little bit smaller I can kind of see that animate down and you know what I don't The gutter needs to be a little bit bigger, maybe, so up that to two M's. Things just kind of start moving around while I'm developing it. Uh, so let me just put that back the way it was. Cool. So I, I like I like it the way it was, um, but I need to do some changes down to. Uh, This plugin interferes a little bit with tree saver, so, <laughs> so let me deactivate it and uh, get to where I need to style. So I need to style this this thing right here. Uh, so this is sort of the 
the byline for this um, this template. Reinitiate live reload and uh, yeah, let me work on this. So this is where all of the typography happens and. So using the class signed, So that snapped into place. Uh, cool. But I want to make this a little bit lighter, so. light enough. And too light. So let's go with a medium. See that sort of fade in and uh, you know I like that. Um, but I, did, I still don't really know what this is. Let me just um, you know put it before class so it has a uh, So it has some sort of indication that it's a, a signature instead of just a left aligned paragraphs. Uh, I'll just put a, a hyphen right before it. Beautiful. So that's what I was going for, and uh, now the the author's name is in there, and it all looks good to me. Let me just remove this uh, this plugin, and There we go. Great, that looks good. So um, yeah, just a little recap. I modularized my my um, themes are completely separate from the framework, so that way I can maintain everything easily. Um, and I use, uh, you know, if if something that old that I'm working on needs to be updated, all I do is plug it into the framework, and it can rapidly just be be updated to the latest code base. Uh, any bugs are then fixed, and um, you know, of course, I need to go through and make sure that the update didn't break it. But it makes maintenance much easier than just finding on a case by case basis what went wrong. Um, and then I compile everything at once that I'm working on currently, so that uh, you know I can immediately push without worrying that it's the, um, that a bug that's been fixed is being shipped. Um, so everything is is uh, developed together as one unit um, within this framework, and then I use live reload to um, 
to kind of immediately see the results um, of uh, of the styles that I'm um, the styles that I'm implementing. And uh, yeah, that's uh, kind of how this works. All right. Hope you uh, found this interesting.